Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very, very much for being here this morning. This is obviously a very, very important day for us and an important milestone in the evolution of Lucille Packard Children's Hospital here at Stanford. We've been planning this uh, event, or more importantly, the new building, for about 10 years. So we're really delighted that we've actually come to the point where construction has already started, or at least the big hole has been dug. And uh, hopefully we'll see some, some steel coming up sometime next year. But we really are very uh, appreciative of you all joining us today. And also the fact that many of you in this room played such an important role in bringing today to a reality. But we're here to celebrate really a vision that was created by Lucille Packard um, back over 25 years ago. She had a vision, she, at the time she was on the board of directors of the um, uh, Children's Hospital at Stanford, which was over by where the Ronald McDonald House is now. And the plan there was to uh, rebuild that hospital. It was a small hospital, about 60 beds. But fortunately, to, because of the vision of Dr. Larry Crowley and the chair of pediatrics, they, they persuaded Lucille Packard and many others that instead of rebuilding it, the campus across the way, as I said, where the Ronald McDonald's house is today, but to instead build the hospital here. And the reason for that, and also there was some discussion of actually moving the hospital to San Jose because it was more, that was kind of where the children were. But the insistence was that they really wanted to keep it on the Stanford campus and actually move it to the medical center because they wanted to take advantage of the incredible resources that existed within the university and within the local community. And so that's what led to building a, the Children's Hospital as we know today here on the Stanford campus. Over the last two decades, we have seen that hospital grow uh, significantly, not only in terms of the number of patients that we see, but, more, but also in terms of the capabilities as a hospital we have. We're now a children's hospital where other children's hospitals refer patients to. We see some of the most critically ill patients, but also we see some of the patients who just need just uh, more lower acute care. And we also, in the mid-90s, um, added a new service to our uh, program. We moved the obstetric programs under the management and into the, uh, into the hospital. So we now have a full obstetric service and have done so now for the last 15 years. So we have a hospital today that is, has been serving the community, the local community. We are the children's hospital for our local community, but we're also a regional center for children from all over the country. In fact, over the last couple years, we've been serving uh, patients from over 40 different states. So we're very excited as we move forward with this new design to, to expand the hospital to meet the needs not only of our uh, patients and families in the community today, but what we anticipate will be the uh, future needs as much as one can predict that. I have a few thank yous I'd like to make. First of all, I want to thank all of our medical staff and nursing staff and all of our hospital staff and volunteers for the tremendous work they do every single day. In a few minutes, we will um, hear from some of the uh, graduates from our program uh, to hear their stories. It was the medical staff, our patients and families, and our hospital staff that really inspired us to look at designing a new hospital, um, an addition to a new hospital. Now, we talk about this as an addition, but to put this in perspective, the current hospital is about 300,000 square feet, and the new addition we're building is over 520,000 square feet. So it's quite a big addition. So we're going from a 300,000 300, square foot facility to over 800,000 square feet. And to help us with that, we engaged a number of experts. But first and foremost, we brought community leaders together, and particularly our board of directors together, to establish what we called a, des a design team. And I do want to take a few minutes to just acknowledge Elizabeth Dunleavy, who chaired that committee, that included David Alexander, Ann Bass, 
Gary Dillabo, Susan Ford Dorsey, Mark uh, Susan Orr, Boyd Smith, Sue Flanagan, Mark Torteridge, Liz Cheney, and Jill Sullivan. They were really the people who really drove the design of the new facility. And it was that committee that then selected our architects. And we're, we have our architectural team here this, to this morning. Our architectural team was led by Robin Gunther and Rob Goodwin with Perkins and Will. With Dan, it's okay, I'll be just a second. <laughs> Dan Rechtenwald and um, Harv uh, Cohen uh, with Hamill Green Abraham who are there, I'm sorry, or I usually call them just HGA, but excuse me, um, who has been working, and is actually our lead architects because we're in California, we need California architects, and the design architects again was Perkins and Will. So Robin, uh, Rob, Dan, and Harv, thank, thank you. you. So we had a, a group that helped us to determine what we needed we hired a professional architectural team to help us design what we needed. And the last step, obviously, is to hire uh, those who are actually going to build the building. And I'm very pleased to say we were delighted to be able to recruit Mike Harast, who's in the back there. I'd like him to raise his hand. That's Mike Harast. He's our <laughs> vice president for construction and is in charge of the project. He has a whole team he's put together. And then we uh, went through a process and we hired DPR uh, Construction to be our general contractor. And Doug Wood, I think, is over there. And Doug is uh, the CEO of DPR, and we're delighted that DPR is part of the project. And lastly, but certainly uh, equally important, is that in, to get to the point we are now, we had to get approvals from the state primarily and the uh, uh, city of Palo Alto. So I don't know whether they're here today, but uh, Bob Reedy, who heads up designing uh, the facilities and design uh, on campus, and his colleague, uh, Bill Phillips, uh, along with Sherry Sager and Mark Torteridge and others, led the way in terms of going through all the regulatory processes and getting approval for not only this facility, but also the Stanford Hospital adjacent to us. So I'd like to thank Bob, Bill, and also Steve Turner with the City of Palo Alto for their assistance. And of course, we wouldn't achieve this without going through a political process. And so we want to thank those politicians who have joined us. And we have many of our local representatives in the audience. I'm just going to read all their names and then uh, acknowledge them all at one time. We have Elena Paul, who's representing Congresswoman Jackie Speer. We have Kathleen Collins, um, who's representing uh, Congresswoman uh, Zoe Lofren. We have um, Brenda Tusing, uh, who is representing Joe Semidian's office, who's, uh, rep who's State Senator uh, Joe Semidian. Assemblyman Rich Gordon's here. Palo Alto City Councilman Larry Klein. Palo Alto City Councilwoman Gail Price, Palo Alto City Councilman Pat Burt, uh, Mayor uh, Yahweh Ye, who will be joining us at the podium in a few minutes, Assemblyman Jerry Hill, and Los Altos, City, Los Altos Hill City Council, Rich Larson. Thank you all for being here. So just a little background as to why we felt we needed this new hospital or new hospital building or buildings. When we first started designing this hospital, which was actually, as I said, when we started actually thinking we needed it, uh, was actually back in 2002 and 2003. And in the years immediately following that, we found ourselves in a position, unfortunately, of actually turning children away because we didn't have the capacity to take care of them. We simply didn't have the space. We had the, the, we had the medical expertise, but we didn't have the space. We also found ourselves in a position to where um, the, the current building, as good and as attractive it is, it really wasn't designed for today's medicine. And what we needed was a, a facility that not only had more bed capacity, more outpatient capacity, but equally importantly, it had more diagnostic capabilities. When we opened the hospital back in 1991, we didn't even have operating rooms. 
But five years ago, we were with a very generous support of, of our community, um, and particularly Susan Ford Dorsey, we were able to build new operating rooms a few years ago. We also built a cardiac intensive care unit. We also built a cancer center. Once we completed those three projects, the building was really maxed out and really did not have any more capabilities for expansion. And again, not only for size, but I think more importantly for uh, the utilities and the capabilities to actually have the kind of sophisticated diagnostic services we needed. So we set about designing a new building that would increase our diagnostic capabilities as well as our bed capacity. The new facility has over four times as much space for operating rooms, in interventional radiology services, cath labs, uh, imaging services, and so forth. And this has really been designed very thoughtfully that we not only can meet the needs that we perceive we have today, but more importantly, and the design team heard me say this many, many times, but more importantly, we have a facility that once open will actually be designed for the future where we have the flexibility to change as technology changes. And that was certainly one of our most important um, uh, requirements with this new facility. We are very proud of the fact that we are seen as an institution that provides not only care for uh, all of our children locally as well as uh, expectant mothers, but also a hospital, as I mentioned before, that really is designed and has the capability to take care of some of the most complex needs um, uh, uh, that children have. And we are a facility, as I mentioned earlier, where other, children, uh, other children's hospitals uh, refer patients to us. Another attribute that we have as a hospital which we're extremely proud of is we have a reputation as a hospital that is focused on family-centered care. For those of you who are not familiar with that concept, it basically, the idea is, and in fact this is proven, uh, been proven with research, that the best way to take care of a child is actually to take care of the whole family. Because the child is an integral part of a family and, and the child's outcome has a lot to, will be determined in part anyway, not only by the clinical interventions, but by the environment that the family creates. And so we have focused for many years on not only taking care of the child, but taking care of the entire family and making sure the entire family is part of the eventual outcome with the child. And so we've designed the new hospital to really foster that. For example, in uh, the patient rooms today, we have a space in our medical surgical floors for one parent um, per bed. In our new hospital, we will have two, uh, uh, for both parents will be able to stay for every child that's in the hospital. We also have expanded capabilities for our critical care patients, uh, the parents of critical care patients. As I mentioned earlier, we, al we also uh, have a, a significant increase in the amount of uh, technology capabilities as well. Our new hospital will also be primarily private rooms. Uh, and that's not because, you know, some people think private rooms is kind of a luxury. It's not a luxury. It's actually there very purposefully. We want to make sure that we can control infections. We want to make sure uh, people do have privacy. We want to make sure we can contribute to this in environment, this family-centered care healing environment. And you really need to have a private room to do that. So the vast majority of the new rooms in the hospital, um, uh, essentially all of them, will be uh, uh, private rooms. Another point I want to make sure uh, I acknowledge is that we have a, we've had really from since the opening of the hospital a family advisory council. And the family advisory council is extremely important to us. That it's made up of, of uh, members of families who've either got children in the hospital at the time or who have had children in the hospital in the past. And the value of that family advisory committee, they really help us across the board. They help us with employee orientation to make sure our employees understand what it's like to have a child in the hospital. We also tapped into that family advisory committee to help us design the new hospital so that we made sure that we weren't designing it for what we thought people needed, but we were designing it for what people said they actually needed. Lastly, we, would, we are as good as the support we receive from the community. And we have received incredible support from the community for this project and for many more. For this particular project, we set a goal of raising $250 million towards the 
overall price of $1.2 billion. And I'm very pleased to announce that um, over the last uh, 30 days, we've achieved that goal. So this community... <laughs> this community has really stepped up to the plate and made very clear not only do they support this children's hospital, but they want it to continue to do the work that we do and to do even better. And we've achieved that very significant goal through many, many supporters throughout the community. But there will be, I wanted to acknowledge three that we'll be hearing from today. One is our corporate partners with Hewlett Packard uh, and Apple, and with our lead individual gift from John and Sue Sobrato and the Sobrato Foundation. And they'll have a chance to talk a little bit in a few minutes. What I'd like to do now is invite the mayor of uh, Palo Alto to join me on the stage to make a few comments. Mary A. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here on behalf of Palto City Hall, and I come with uh, two simple messages. The first being a thank you, and the second being a congratulations. Uh, over two years ago, uh, the community of Palo Alto uh, experienced immense tragedy when we had a series of uh, student suicides. The community was going through uh, immense heartbreak when community partners stepped up, and the Children's Hospital was one of the leaders amongst those community partners. They provided an incredible technical expertise to help stem the immediate crisis by providing in-kind services through their medical staff to support our schools, to support our community. But just as importantly, they became part of a long-term solution. They joined an organization and became a partner in something called Project Safety Net, which really created uh, the social safety net for our youth and our community to work through the difficult years of adolescence. Uh, but what we learned through that process too was that the Children's Hospital is our friend, is our community partner, is here for the long term and is part of the family that we have here within Palo Alto. And for that, uh, the city of Palo Alto, uh, City Hall, we have gratitude for the Children's Hospital for the role that they've taken. At the same time with any community partners, sometimes you make them go through 97 public hearings. <laughs> Sometimes you have meetings that go until about midnight. Sometimes, through your love and care for this community partner, you dive into the details of plans and designs, and you work through four of those 10 years, Chris, <laughs> together to achieve uh, the incredible vision that we now see uh, in front of us today. And ultimately, the end result, uh, you see some incredible photos and designs. Uh, it's not just uh, images, but it's, it's true concern, consideration, and support for children and for families that the Children's Hospital has brought. Uh, and they've emerged as a national and international leader within this space. And so for having made it through the love and care of 97 public hearings, uh, I also wanted to share on behalf of City Hall uh, sincere and hearty congratulations to the Children's Hospital for today and for the years to come. If uh, going through meetings um, is a sense of love, I, we felt a lot of love. <laughs> a lot of love, no question about it. I'd now like to introduce the first of two of our very special guests, these are uh, uh, young adults who have uh, gone, uh, experienced our services, and we thought it would be very nice, since that's what we do, we'd like, uh, we thought it would be helpful for you to hear their story. So the first who's going to join us is Miranda Ashlyn. <laughs> Miranda was a uh, liver transplant recipient. I think she's going to be telling her story. Thank you. Hello. I came to Lucille Packard when I was two months old because I was born with the disease and I desperately needed a liver transplant. Fortunately, I was admitted to Packard and received the care I needed to stay alive. 
They gave me a liver transplant along with 17 years of excellent care afterwards. This hospital saved my life, but has also saved countless others. Today marks the beginning of the construction of the expansion of the hospital, but it also marks the beginning of so much more. At Lucille Packard, each child is cared for deeply by the staff, and not only are the patients' lives touched, but the families as well. In my experience, when we needed help, Packard Children's was there for us. But I can imagine how devastating it would be if we were trying to seek care and we couldn't find it. Once this hospital opens, think of how many more children will be able to receive the care they need and how many more lives will be touched by the amazing professionals here. Packard Children's means so much to me because, of course, I wouldn't be here without it. This hospital thrives because it's not only interested in fixing the problem or curing the disease. They're also interested in life after Packard and having, um, giving children a normal life afterwards. And that's one of the most impactful things that I've gained here is that I didn't just receive a liver and a second chance at life. I received a second chance to live my life. And that means so much to me. Once this hospital is up and running, all the children who will come to Packard in the future will get everything I've ever gotten and more. But most importantly, Packard has given me hope. They give hope to parents and families who see their child sick in the hospital. They give hope to the friends who come and visit those kids. And of course, they give hope to the children who, are just, who just want to get better and go home. I'm so excited for the expansion of this hospital because it means that more children and families will be able to walk through the doors, receive the care they need, and, get, and be given hope that will carry them through the rest of their lives. Thank you. takes a lot of courage. Thank you very much, Miranda. So we are here to take care of very complex problems like transplants, but we're also here to try and head off problems. And one of the programs that we have had for many, many years uh, under the leadership of Dr. Tom Robinson is a program that uh, what we call uh, a program for healthy weight. And uh, one of the key aspects of that program is to focus on childhood obesity, which as I think many of you know is a national epidemic. And uh, here today is one of the individual, one of the young men, a young man who's been part of that program, Sam Feldman, who's gonna tell you of his story. Good morning. First of all, I'd just like to say how much of an honor it is to speak here today. My name is Sam Feldman, and Lucille Packard has touched my life in many ways. To begin with, I was born at this very hospital in 1999, and I spent time at this hospital recovering from an injury this year. But the pinnacle of Lucille Packard's influence in my life was when I participated in the weight management program. In 2009, at age 10, I was beginning fourth grade, and I was 50 pounds overweight. That put me in the obese category that shockingly includes one out of every three children in America. Weight had always been a problem in my life, but going into fourth grade was the worst it had ever been. My parents decided to take a step in the right direction and enroll me in the Packard Pediatric Weight Management Program. And boy, is a step in the right direction an understatement. <laughs> the program completely changed my life. Backed by decades of research, the program has every last detail figured out and staggers new topics they introduce to you weekly. You learn how to budget your foods, how to manufacture exercise for those times when you're absolutely sure you have a good reason not to. <laughs> Additionally, you learn to exercise self-control and discipline. Not only was I overweight at the time, but I lacked self-confidence in everything I did, especially athletics. As a child, I always loved sports, but I could never keep up with the pack because of my weight. I was always very ashamed when we would run a mile because I was so embarrassed at my time. That was until I did the program. The program com completely changed my outlook on life. Yes, life. Not just that I shouldn't have that bag of chips. It, it taught me that when you're faced with a huge challenge, you have to take it slowly, step by step, and then you can overcome it. In fourth grade, I'd run a 13 and a half minute mile, which was an all-time low. I, I did the program for a year, 
came back to the track 20 pounds lighter, and went on to shock my class when I finished second with a time of 7.15. One of the most important aspects of the program was that I continued following it after. The program stresses that it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle, and it's the lifestyle that I have adopted. Now, close to four years later, I have shaved my body mass index, or BMI, 47%, right on the brink of the healthy weight category. The program didn't just help me on the field. Now whenever I'm faced with a challenge, I thrust myself toward it with a head full of confidence because I know that I've overcome childhood obesity and now I believe I can overcome anything. Thank you. So those are just two stories to represent what we try and do here. So it's just great to see Sam and Miranda Thank you again very much for, for joining us up here. As I mentioned earlier, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the incredible philanthropic support of the community. And there's one organization and one person that has represents that more than just a, more than anyone. And that is Susan Packard Orr and the David and Lucio Packard Foundation, who have been so incredibly generous to this organization, but more importantly to this community for the last several decades. Uh, Susan isn't going to be saying anything today, but she is here representing the David and Lucio Packard Foundation. Another very generous member of our community is John Sobrato and his wife Sue and their family foundation. As I think most of you are aware, John and his wife and his family's foundation have been extremely generous to this community for many, many years. And they were early supporters of the Lucio Packard Children's Hospital. And when we went back to them with the uh, vision of creating this uh, new facility, John was the first of our first to step forward um, and said that he wanted to be part of it. And he, uh, he and his family now represent our lead individual gift. John, would you like to join us, please? Good morning. Well, Sue and I are delighted to support the Packard Children's Expansion Project, and it's an honor for me to speak to you today about our, our commitment to this hospital and to its mission of providing for the health and well-being of our community. This is a very special day for Sue and I to finally see construction underway. It was six years ago when I was approached by the foundation staff to help with a lead gift. I had no idea at the time that it would take six years to gain entitlement to build. <laughs> I really should have known better, having dealt with many cities during my development career. My family's longstanding friendship with Packard's Children's Hospital began nearly 15 years ago when my mother made a gift to build the Ann Sobrato Day Room which helps provide families with a sense of normalcy during long periods of hospitalization. Our relationship deepened when my mother established a fund to assist needy families receiving care at Packard. Today, the Ann Sobrato Endowment for Families in Need provides resources for personal expenses, transportation, medications, hotel accommodations, and food vouchers. And thanks to the astute investments made by the Stanford Management Company, the value of my mother's original gift has doubled over the years. The foundation sends me an annual report, and I've watched with pleasure as the endowment has grown while the income from the endowment has been used for the personal expenses of low-income families while their children receive world-class care. Today, Packard's Children's Hospital sees more patients than ever, many of whom require highly specialized care for complex illnesses. Sue and I share Packard's vision of ensuring that any child who needs world-class medical care can have access to it. This project will greatly expand the number of patient beds in specialty areas to accommodate the growing need. Sue and I believe very deeply 
that access to good health care is a God-given right. Families that can't otherwise afford to pay for top-notch care can still be seen at Packard's Hospital. This hospital is truly the safety net for our children, a mission that resonates deeply with us. We're proud to have had our name associated with the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. We are pleased to have had the opportunity to help with the Packard Expansion Project and hope that others will be inspired to join us. Thank you. Again, thank you, John and Sue and uh, Sherry as well. Thank you for being here. Lisa, I'm sorry, my mistake. That's not a good one to make. <laughs> um, in addition to uh, the Damien Lucille Packard Foundation and uh, the Sobrato Foundation, we also had two corporations uh, who very willingly stepped up to help us. The first was Hewlett Packard. Hewlett Packard has been uh, a very uh, closely aligned with the uh, children, with our children's hospital from the very beginning, and in fact was a contributor to the original hospital when it opened in 1991. And since then, we've had lots of collaborations uh, with Hewlett Packard, and we were very, very delighted when uh, about a year ago uh, uh, the Hewlett Packard uh, uh, Corporation agreed to be a major supporter of the hospital, in making a $25 million gift over several years. And here to talk about Hewlett Packard and to acknowledge that gift um, is Meg Whitman. Well, thank you very much, Chris. It's a real privilege to be here this morning. I think everyone in Silicon Valley knows that HP shares a deep history and DNA with the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. As many of you know, the hospital is named after one of our founders, David Packard's wife, Lucille Salter Packard. Lucille was a longtime board member at the old Stanford Children's Hospital and as Chris mentioned, a driver in the creation of Packard Children's and in its transformation to be one of the top children's hospitals in the world. In fact, David Packard attended the first groundbreaking ceremony here just over 20 years ago. And I'm incredibly honored to follow in his footsteps and to take part in the next phase of the transformation in world-class healthcare for children. And world-class you are. Despite caring for the sickest of the sick, those children with truly daunting problems and in need of critical care, Packard Children's consistently has better patient outcomes than any children's hospital in America. Part of the great opportunity, of course, in Silicon Valley is to not only be able to make a financial contribution to the Packard Children's Hospital, but there is also the promise of collaboration and innovation as HP engineers work with Stanford Children's Hospital. And I'm proud to say that since 2007, researchers from Packard Children's and HP Labs have worked together to develop faster, safer, and more personalized patient care. These efforts have already led to great success. For example, example, Packard Children and HP recently developed a new patient safety dashboard that has shown great promise in the intensive care unit. The dashboard is now going into every single unit of the hospital. Earlier, researchers at Packard Children's and HP developed new ways of identifying patients at risk of cardiopulmonary arrest and turned that into a system of, develop, of deploying rapid response teams at the first inkling of trouble in hospitalized children. Today, HP researchers are working to predict the length of various pediatric surgeries and turning that into better operating room scheduling tools. And we have many more things in the pipeline to improve care for sick children here in California and around the world. HP employees feel a big part of this community, and we're all incredibly proud of that collaboration between our researchers and the people at, at uh, Packard Children's. At HP, our new mantra, our new tagline, if you will, to bring the company together is make it matter. We actually don't believe in the power of technology. We believe in the power of technology. We believe in the power of people when technology works for them. 
and what we do together with Packard Children's matters, and we are proud of our collaboration. It's a great demonstration of the positive impact of bringing together people and technology to solve the toughest health care challenges. We're honored to be part of your history, and we look, part, we look forward to being part of your future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Meg. Really appreciate the comments. Um, we were very fortunate. We have a new corporate partner that we've just begun to work with over the past year, and that was is Apple. Apple has obviously been an incredibly important part of this valley for many years, and we're delighted to join forces with Apple to look at improving the health of children and expectant mothers. Representing uh, Apple is Joel Padoli, who is the uh, uh, Vice President for Human Resources and the Dean of Apple University. Joel. Thanks, Chris. Uh, it is great uh, to be here uh, with you all. Uh, like so many others uh, at Apple, in the area, and in the world, um, I and my wife uh, consider ourselves very fortunate that when our children were young, Lucille Packard was there. In fact, uh, my oldest son was less than a year old when Lucille Packard opened its doors. Given that he graduated from college last year, <laughs> thank you, uh, uh, it, it made me realize uh, that the first cohorts of newborns seen at Lucille Packard are just now entering adulthood and soon having children of their own, many of whom will also be seen here. Lucille Packard is one of those remarkable Silicon Valley stories about how an organization goes from its founding to having a meaningful impact on the world in less than a generation. While we take those stories a little bit for granted here, that is nothing to take for granted. It is an amazing, amazing story, and it's due to the work and the support of so many who are here, so many of who are just steps away. Those of us at Apple feel very lucky to have Lucille Packard so close, and we take great pride and we delight and being able to support the important work that the hospital does and having a resource for the world in our backyard. We look forward to being both a partner and a beneficiary in all the great things to come. So on behalf of everybody at Apple, thank you for giving us the opportunity to participate in something so special. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joel. Really appreciate the comments. Um, before, uh, before we move on with the uh, digging the dirt, we have one more speaker. And um, when we're, as obviously we're part of Stanford University, an academic medical center. And a lot of the research here is funded by uh, NIH. And for over 45% of our patients are funded either by state or federal uh, uh, dollars, and so we feel very, very close to the to our government because without it, we wouldn't have the research opportunities, and many patients and that come here would not be able to come here. So we've asked um, Herb Schultz, who is the administrator of Region Nine, to say a few words on behalf of our biggest payer. Good morning. I don't look great in the hats, but I'm going to put this on. Um, I am here, uh, I'm Region 9 Director for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And before I start, one Sherry Sager told me I had two or three minutes, so when I get to three, just go like this, because I can go on. But let's give Sam and Miranda another round of applause. Um, I just want to say first, uh, if our mayor is still here, I'm glad to know that local government is doing 97 hearings because the federal government would never do that to you. <laughs> but I digress. 
Okay. What's standing between me and this wonderful groundbreaking is about two minutes. And what I want to say and what I think we heard today is think about the community. And we often think about Silicon Valley and we think about a couple of different things and all the brilliance of Silicon Valley and all of the community here. And what I've learned over the last several years is that Silicon Valley, like every community throughout this country, is very different depending on where you sit. And as Chris said, we do help with many, many of the patients that are here and many of the family members. And so as a part of that community, to come on behalf of the federal government and talk about this is a real partnership for those who are poor, for those who are not poor, for those who are sick with the most complex illnesses, children with the most complex illnesses, right? But we're all talking about family and we're all talking about that. And I've been hearing since, I've known children's, I guess, since my first state appointment years ago, and look at that ditch, okay? I happen to think it's beautiful. <laughs> because one, I don't know the first thing about building, and two, I know what it not only represents to this community, but I think Lucille Packard Children's is not only one of the greatest, not the greatest children's hospital in the world, it's one of the best hospitals, period, bar none. And I think on behalf of the Obama administration, in being here, one of the things that I most believe this represents, and everybody's sort of been talking a little bit about I'm going to use the F word, future. <laughs> and what the future represents, because recently, Sherry Sager, who heads up government affairs on behalf of Chris, sent me a note and said, I want you to see what we are doing in our cafeteria and what we are doing to lead not only around childhood obesity, but what this hospital currently is doing and what in the future it's doing because it's not all about, as Packard knows really well, about sick care. And yes, best in the world in terms of treating children with complex illnesses. But it's about the programs that you and the community have supported, that Packard has developed to make sure that we can prevent all of the conditions and all of the diseases that afflict our children today who are not only living longer, but there's living proof, they're surviving and they're living to adulthood and having children and grandchildren. And maybe I've been thinking a little bit about this a little too much, I'll let you in a secret, I just became AARPH. <laughs> so I have my card for five years and when um, you do stop and think about, as you said, kids being 21, this community is an astonishing example and model of what it's all about, of giving back, of providing, and of showing not only this country, but showing this world that you can put your mind to it, that you can spend 10 years, that you can go through 97 meetings. Why? Because it's about our future, not our past and you all are representing that, and on behalf of the Obama administration, Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, I am so proud and honored to be standing here. You'll be happy to know I'm not gonna drive that little deer tractor as much as I've always wanted to. But the bottom line is, this is a historic day, not only in the lives of all of the children that are here and in the community, all of the medical staff and the professionals and the staff that staff the hospitals, everybody that came together. But this is a great day for the United States of America when you can stand up and say, okay, healthcare is a right. And the children that come here are living proof of that. And for those who are ill, they get the best care possible. And it's happening right here in Region 9 and I couldn't be more proud to say congratulations, mazel tov, and let's get this thing broken into the ground. Thank you very much.
Herb, thank you very, very much. Um, they must have just flown you in from the uh, convention here. So. <laughs> we have, uh, our program is coming to an end. I know for those of you who have been standing for quite some time, we're getting close. Um, but we have two important uh, orders of business to take care of. Um, is uh, Mike Condor, our representative from his office here, we have a resolution, I believe, that uh, is to be presented. Is that right? No one's from. Okay, you'd like to tell people what it says? It says congratulations, and this is the future, and he's really excited for us. <laughs> and he apologizes. He apologizes. He's, he's in Charlotte. That was creative. That's no, good. No, I read it. I read it. He's, he's in Charlotte. <laughs> okay, and then um, I know Rich Gordon's here, so Rich, do you, you want to come up here? Rich Gordon, Assembly, Assemblyman Rich Gordon. And Jerry Hill. Thank you, Chris. I've, I've asked my colleague from the State Assembly, uh, Jerry Hill, to join me. Um, and um, the, uh, we come with a resolution um, from the State Assembly and also from uh, our State Senator, Joe Simidian. We, um, we want to present this to you, Chris, um, in honor and recognition of this historic day. And uh, we do this on behalf of this community, this community uh, here at the hospital, the community of staff and professionals, the doctors and nurses, ancillary care professionals uh, who uh, care for our children here. We do this on behalf of the broader community that has raised the funds, generated the support, and will always be here on behalf of this hospital. Um, we care about you, we care about this place, uh, and we care about our children. And so we are very grateful on behalf of the state of California to commend and congratulate uh, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital on this momentous day as we move forward into the next few phase of, of this hospital uh, and to our future. Chris, congratulations and thank you. Before we conclude, uh, we have a brief three-minute, I think, video that we would like to share with you. It talks a little bit about who we are, but also where we're going. So I think if we can roll the video. <laughs> we are recognized for healing. We are recognized for innovation. We care for children and expected mothers. Provide extraordinary family-centered care. We make medical discoveries and advances. We change families' lives. We are growing with our new state-of-the-art facility. And what's most exciting isn't only what we've been, but what we're becoming. As healthcare is in the midst of radical change, we are poised to help shape the future and show the world what makes Packer Children's extraordinary. For our patients. For our families. For our communities. For the world. And for each other. Because together, we make the difference. We are Packard Children's. Well, again, thank you all very much for being here. A special thank you for Sam and Miranda for being our special guests and our other speakers uh, today. And so, and thank everybody here for taking time out of your day to join us for this special occasion. Just mark your calendars in about four, four years and a couple months. Um, we'll be back here, right, Mike and Doug? To cut the ribbon um, to open the new hospital. So thank you all very much. And if the speakers could join me over here, please. Thank you.